Um, my name is Aaron Williams. Um, I'm the community manager and dev advocate for Ampere. Um, sorry for the little delay here. I have a Mac at an open source conference that doesn't really work out well, apparently. But anyways, so uh, I'm here to talk about what we did is um, we wanted to uh, kind of have some fun with uh, Mastodon, basically. Uh, you know, it's been kind of in the news a little bit. Uh, those of you who, like myself, live in the Bay Area, um, it's been all over the news uh, <laughs> for what's going on, namely with um, their new owner. And the interest has spiked as he's done things, um, namely, you know, this is per day. So this is how many thousands of new users and new instances have popped up. And if you notice when he completed it, people started talking about it the next couple of days, uh, suddenly there's a massive spike in Macedon. Uh, then when they announced the first round of layoffs, massive thing there. And then when he did his Twitter 2.0 um, hardcore uh, ultimatum, massive spike there. And so that's really, we knew this conference was coming up and we also wanted to kind of learn about Macedon, see what was there. You know, in essence, we wanted to get paid to create our own um, Mastodon instances. Uh, so what we did is we started playing with it and, and you know, really wanted to see how difficult it was to set up, uh, you know, your own instance for it. Um, so real simply, uh, for those, I mean, this is a highly technical conference, so I know you guys, a lot of you probably already know most about this, but it's a federated uh, social network. Uh, versus Twitter, which is highly centralized. The idea here is that you have a whole bunch of uh, small instances around that all can communicate to each other. And what that really does is it cr allows you to control what you see a lot more than what you have in the past. Um, and namely, there is not one company that is controlling you know, what you see or trying to get you more involved and more engaged um, so putting stuff that will just do that, you know, get you riled up so that way you'll do it. Um, and the biggest thing for us was, is it was self-hosted. You can do, you know, the self-hosting part of it. And that allows us to, you know, really kind of play with this. And no, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about it. I only have 20 minutes um, to get going. But what we, you know, when you start really looking at it, it's just really a couple parts. It's a Ruby on Rails, has Postgres with a, a Redis backend. And then, um, you know, a sidekick component that does um, the the job schedule and the actual, actually, excuse me, the actual implementations of the jobs. This thing's really messy up here. Um, and Macedon, because of the way it's set up, really produces a, an insane amount of jobs. But at, basically, it is just a simple web application. It's just a tried and true type thing. It's quite amazing that how much of the stuff runs, how well it runs without, you know, needing of streaming, you know, such as like Kafka or Pulsar or Cassandra um, or MongoDB, anything like that. It's actually uh, pretty simple and works very, very well. Um, because there hasn't been a lot of written about this, a lot of, there's some tutorials out there that are just going, this is the best kind of um, arch architecture diagram that I've found. And, Basically, I know this is way too small. Basically, just think this is the input. It goes into the Mastodon uh, Ruby on Rails application. And from there, um, it, it, you know, if it's, there's media files, sends it out to you know, basic file storage. If not, uh, for kind of long-term um, storage, um, you know, single uh, source of truth, it goes out into the post, uh, uh, Postgres. And then for... Uh, jobs and communicating out to the other instances out there, it uses that's where it uses the Redis and uh, for its in cache uh, and the database for the sidekick. So, once again, uh, while it's probably really small, um, here I did kind of put who put this up. This is Adam, Adam Morsky. Um, it's called the Architect, Architecture of Mastodon. You know, I want to, sorry, I also have a degree in history, so therefore I have to cite everything, um, even though. More than that. So that kind of leads us to why Ampere, why Arch64, and why we were doing this. Um, basically, we are, uh, you know, cloud native. And what do we mean by that? And like this great overused uh, marketing term is our servers are high performance, scalable, predictable, and energy efficient. See, are very energy efficient. So what does that actually mean? 
Uh, very simply, the high performance, we have very high core, uh, core counts. Sorry, I have to keep myself here. I want to walk around the stage, but the mic's right here. Um, in addition to that, we have a ton of the L2 uh, uh, cache you know, to process this stuff really fast. It doesn't do you any good to have all a bunch of cores if you can't get the, the information in and out of them really fast. Um, scalable, we have our main thing is a single threaded cores. And what that allows you to do is um, allows you to scale very, very well. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, and there's no noisy neighbor issues. Um, other systems, x86, uh, uses you know virtual CPUs. So therefore, you're always kind of limited to who's next door to you. Who are you um, splitting that core with? And what this leads to is, is great predictability. It's linear scalable for it. And then, like I said, the better uh, efficiency. And so real quick, just to kind of dive into that, this line here, um, the one going straight, you can barely see it. There's dotted lines underneath that green one, our dots. Um, that is kind of the ideal scaling. So, you know, you add in another core, um, another, uh, you know, just every time you add a core, you get what you would expect versus, you know, if you have virtual CPUs that goes down over time. Uh, the green line matches that very, very closely. And with the single cores, you now have also uh, better security, easier to get, uh, you know, things through that just because you're not, you know, sharing cores. And therefore the kind of the better performance and whatnot you get out of this. And this is kind of the systems we're kind of coming up with here. So, but now I really want to talk about the energy efficiency part. This is actually what is insanely important as servers. Um, I, I was, I grew up in Silicon Valley. Uh, both my parents were programmers. Um, as I always like to brag, my mom was an assembler programmer. Um, just because I think that is so cool and I could never do that. Uh, but both of them were, so I've been here. The reason it came in Silicon Valley at the time was there was space, there was open, and you could throw up solar panels or you know, more, uh, just lay some wires. It was um, farmland at the time. And well, that's changed. Uh, data centers now, you can put them out. I mean, Google's proud of putting it out in Iowa, throwing up a bunch of solar panels on top. But this is really kind of, uh, you know, with global climate change and stuff like that, it's really starting to affect things. Like right now, London, there's places in London where they're not going to be building housing until 2035 because that's when they think the infrastructure will catch up to the data centers are there. And so that's why I really want to highlight kind of this part. And so rack density and performance per watt, probably new terms to you, but they intuitively make sense. The more um, servers that you put onto a rack, that's great, you know, what, what it was built for. But now with that, how much energy um, that comes through, you now have to, you know, lay new lines basically um, just to get it. Or probably, and even if you did that, then you have the problem of the heat that's coming off of these things. Um, so you can't, you just can't do it. And so that limits the amount of space you have. So now you actually literally have to build a new data center. But with the Ampere, um, you know, ARG64 uh, servers, um, you can put in a lot more servers into each of those racks. And what that means is also the amount of cores go up. And as you can see from the, um, so that's the rack density can now go back up to what it was, meaning the number of servers you had there. And the other metric is performance per watt. This is just gigaflops or flops or just simply operations per second per amount of watt, uh, wattage use. So anyways, so that's all kind of the background stuff uh, for this. But we also have to rely on high performance, right? Because no one's going to take you know, a server that's, oh, great, it's more efficient, but you can't do anything. And we have a whole bunch of stats on this, but this is just Redis's version of it. Um, you know, the throughput is much better than, uh, you know, x86 stuff that's uh, already out there. And then the performance per watt is, you know, is, is insane. It's great for this. Um, all right, so what we built... Unfortunately, I'm using somebody else's laptop, so I can't quite show you what we did. Uh, we did do uh, two Mastodon instances. Uh, we used uh, one is called Hippodon. Uh, that one, is, a Hippodon is, a, is an extinct horse from, from the Americas. Uh, so kind of along the time of the Mastodons. 
And we put it on OCI, so we use Oracle's uh, cloud infrastructure, uh, free tier. Um, so it's the always free tier. So if you go and sign up for this, they won't charge you for it um, ever type. That's what they really do mean by all, always free. And it has 24 gig of RAM. I, we are running on my Linux just because we're trying to get the CentOS. It's there, but somehow it's not just activated. So we're working with them to, to get the CentOS up and, and running on there. And there's a whole bunch of other um, community versions of Linux that are there. You can use their standard one, but I doubt anybody here is going to use that. And then the other one we did, we did it on GCP. Uh, it's a smaller, uh, at least le a little less RAM. Now for Mastodon itself, you probably, you know, if you if you got your server going up and, and it was running for a while and you started to build this out, uh, basically if you put like CentOS, created their own one, you would want to, you know, have larger space and whatnot because this thing can, can start sucking up a lot of uh, energy. And just real quick, that's what we did. Um, I wouldn't really, you can join this if you'd like. Um, there's, I won't guarantee that it's gonna be up. It is on a free server and it's my personal one and I don't really want to uh, manage, <laughs> manage this as much, you know, as little as I have to. And it very well could go down. So, uh, and that's kind of it. I, I, we'll put out a tutorial out there. We have a bunch of links that, that will actually walk you through how to do it if you're interested in doing this. And it's a great way to kind of learn a little bit more about Mastodon, um, allow, you know, and what, um, you know, Ampere servers do. Um, and if you go to, you know, for our developer portal, which is developer.ampere.com. And the thing that we're just kicking off right now is our community page. So if you go to community uh, community.ampere.com, you can sign up for that or, you know, just read the, the documents. What we're really trying to do here with this is um, ARM itself has a, a great developer experience, but 90% of the stuff there deals with Raspberry Pis, which is great. I mean, I have a large collection at my desk in throughout my home and you know, probably like much, most of you. <laughs> but that's where most of it is. It's mostly hobbyists. And so what we're really trying to do is push um, the AR64 server community. Um, and while, you know, obviously, uh, you know, for Ampere, that's what we want. We want you guys to come in and use our stuff, but really we're really looking for that thought leadership and stuff around how to move people uh, from x86 onto this AR64, um, you know, architecture. And it's quite simply because we want that pie to, uh, uh, to grow. Um, there, you know, we're basically on just about every public cloud except for one because they have their own. Um, but then again, you know, the joke would be is, do you really want to go with them? They sell books. I mean, come on. They're kind of a small little company out of Seattle. Uh, anyways. Uh, go with all uh, all the other ones are using our servers and whatnot. But like I said, what we're, our real goal here is to grow the community, grow. You guys are exactly who we would love to have come and talk, um, kind of show other people how to use this stuff. What are you building? Get native builds now done on ARCH64 um, and things like that. So this is a quick little thing. So we have a thing on scaling Mastodon. We've been really trying to talk with a couple of the uh, groups out there that have built these large ones that have grown. Um, and we love that, you know, Mastodon is just a really good example of this because for most people, if you wanted to create your own one, it's gonna be relatively small unless you're a celebrity or you have a inbuilt uh, community around. There's a lot of tech communities out there that have built these things and they're really growing. Um, and they're having a little bit of issues as they're starting to scale it because it's been such a, a big jump in the number of people who are using it. And so here's our portal. Sorry, I would be showing you guys these, but I just wanted to do it. And so that, that was my citation page. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Oh, and you can ask me stuff about Ampere or things like that too. Um, if you want to deep dive into Mastodon, I'll, yeah. You say that you want, you know, more people into the into your ARM platform stuff. Mm -hmm. So, when are you going to sell a desktop board to to build ARM ARM Linux computers? We're working on it. Good. Um, 
if you go, if you type in, uh, because we're really trying to move into uh, IoT mm -hmm. uh, more and more. So therefore, like uh, the cruise cars from GM um, are running uh, one of our boxes in there. And that is not um, an 80 core or 128 core uh, device. Uh, we have one out. It's about $4,000. Um, you can go to AdLink and actually purchase it. So you can get it. I know we're working on the price. We're working on that price to get it down on us. So we're working. Give me a two hundred dollar board with a socketed me. arm I, I don't CPU. Have one either. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, upgradable. Yeah. So it's coming. That's all I can say. And we're, what we're trying to do is um, is build, put the bare minimum out there. Um, which for us, I mean, it's also amazing to me because I come from the IoT world. You know, a bare minimum would be. Oh like 32 cores, which is massive in my mind, but it's, it's not our uh, 128 core version. So it's coming. We just have to also work with all the drivers and all that stuff and work with the builders. So that way, you know, you don't get a box and then go, you know, now what? what? Yeah. Yeah. What it was like with Linux 20 years ago, right? Yeah. You, you, you great. I have this, but now what do I do? Mm -hmm. um, also my, uh, why I have 40, Raspberry Pi sitting around. <laughs> it's, it's great. Oh, I can do this project, man. So that's what's happening. Yeah. Uh, I mean, while you're starting to test all that. It's also yeah. Uh, while uh, there is, while you have uh, you're starting to test all those uh, desktop or future desktop devices. Uh, one of the most important things, at least for me, while I'm building a kernel, is just knowing exactly what set of patches are needed on top of the current vanilla. Not just one kernel where it works, but you don't know where it came from. So uh, currently for other ARM devices, I'm, I'm maintaining a set of patches so that it, we know it just works. So uh, even for uh, CentOS, uh, if it doesn't work with the, with the stock kernel, but you can use uh, some set of patches on top of, on top of vanilla kernels, it's still very useful, even if it's not in, uh, mainline yet. So it's uh, from our side, when we are building, having a clean set of patches on top of something well known is, uh, is actually useful. Yeah, and, and that's what we're trying. Uh we're expanding that's what this community part is so the odd part for me was is i've been with ampere now about six months is is to remember that it's a startup um so a lot of that stuff you know we're having to build or we're getting communities to build uh with us and for us so it, it's there um it's amazing how much you can just do that just works um and we really, we have the very odd, all right, my job is to basically try to get you, if you go to one of the public clouds that you're going to choose, why, if you're a normal developer, why would you choose? Is that something that's even on your mind? Um, you know, why would I choose this uh, versus just the standard thing? And more importantly to probably your DevOps people, you know, everything, they're like, yeah. I mean, I'm an engineer, so therefore I, you know, did all the stuff where I went and, oh, yeah, yeah, we need this. And, you know, the DevOps guys are like, no. And you're like, well, no, it works. I don't care, right? Because it's different from what I'm doing now. I'm already overworked. And so we have to get to them and get them to accept this. And one of the biggest things is that efficiency, because now they can really start putting more servers into the rooms and not have to worry about laying new cables. I mean... Is, is, that sounds just networking. No, it's, I mean, it's electrical. You have to rebuild the building. You have to put in more power coming in. And then you have to go to your city and all this stuff. And so this was allowing them to do it. So it's it's there. It's there today. Um, we just need you to click down one button and not just take the obvious one. Right. So uh, one of the things that uh, the arm... Um ecosystem lacks is basically the software around it, right? So uh, take, for instance, Raspberry Pi has a bunch of software around it, but for the alternatives, uh, no matter how powerful they are, they do lack the software, right? Um, the operating systems, the applications, anything that actually works on it. Um, if Ampere provides a stronger hardware, I mean, that would be really welcome, uh, but would it be able to provide the software that can actually create an ecosystem around it, like, you know, a community of some sort? So what would be 
uh, Ampere stand on this? How would they develop um, an ecosystem of software around it? Okay, just to repeat the question back to you, uh, just speak your question. Right. Um, it's simply great if you have one use it. What's the community there to help us out? Uh, not much about the community. Um, the thing is, uh, just because Raspberry Pi has uh, support software, operating systems, and the fact that it's popular, widely popular, right? So people would be willing to write software for it just because there would be people who would be using it. Uh, when it comes for Ampere, sure, there would be devices that would be powerful, you know, and they would have a use case around it. But uh, when it comes to software, so uh, what would be the stand? Uh, how would Ampere address the availability of software that is ARC64 specific? And how would it make sure that it is available so that people can use it? Uh, we're working with the, the public clouds to, to get our stuff there. So all of our stuff is ARCH64. We don't uh, produce x86 at all. Um, so therefore, it's very much in our corporate interest to, to expand that out. And so that's what we're doing to do it. Um, and like I said, we, we got the hardware part built out, and that pipeline's great. Now we're doing the software part of it. Does that answer? Sorry, I'm having, if not, you know, please grab me afterwards and I'll go. Oh, no, I mean, uh, if Ampere plans on developing a single board computer down the line, let's just say uh, oh, some kind like <laughs> You know, in, in, in a hypothetical condition, right? In a, a very good utopia. <laughs> yeah, no more of the crap that lives in uh, the drawers, uh, right? You can tell there's a slight uh, um, disagreement within the community of what we should do next. Um, no, we we won't be producing. Oh, uh, you uh, won't be. We, right. we will never compete with um, you know the Raspberry Pi or Edison and all of Jettison, those type of things. Right. Jetson, sorry. Um, so we'll never have a fifty dollar computer, hundred dollar. <laughs> right. Um, what we're really going to do, I think. Uh, we're trying to get one that's under a thousand bucks. Uh -huh. um, that's as about as stripped down as we're going to go, just because you know our selling point is is the cores and the single thread going through it. Makes so, sense. So if we we somehow produced it like a four, if we competed with Raspberry Pi, um, okay. First of all, I mean you don't compete with something that everybody loves. I mean come on, um, <laughs> but it, it just wouldn't work, and it's not in our interest. Thanks. Uh, so we can basically count on you to show up next year with an ARM64 laptop and give it away as swag? Uh, just in case my boss was seeing this, um, I, I, I can't. Uh, who, was, who, who was like from the university said, I can't, I don't speak on behalf of the company. I'm not a VP, so I don't, I don't speak on behalf of the company, but that's my goal. I would love to. We, we do have one. Um, like I said, we have we we have a, a desktop. It's you know it's a desktop. It looks like a, a gaming machine, um, and one of our our head of IoT you know made it water cooled just because he hates noise. So so there's no fans on it. So it's coming, and I hopefully we'll bring it next year. Give me. <laughs> oh yeah, I have to give it away too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I assume that any patches required for your hardware will be pushed upstream to the kernel. You won't maintain your own kernel like like the Raspberry Pi, for example, when they have kernel Raspberry Pi. Uh, so it's all will be standard upstream kernel patches are maintained. Yeah, yeah right. we're, I never want to say never, but I hope not, um, because that's a lot of work. Um, as As I just told everybody here that Maintaining the kernel is a lot of work. Um, I, I can't see that. What we want is we want uh, to focus more on the general purpose side, um, making sure working with the communities of the various flavors of Linux, but also, I mean, getting, you know, a Windows Server, things like that, working on it. Um, and they do. I mean, we're on Azure, and so you can put a Windows Server on it or Windows on it. Uh, so no is the answer. There's one more behind oh. you. Uh, Probably a fast and short question, because in uh, building in CBS, so for the community, the Arch, ARCH64 builders are currently a little bit stressed and slower than the x86. So have you, as Ampere, ever thought about maybe sponsoring some nodes for this uh, for the CentOS infrastructure so that, that we can build faster? It would be great. 
I don't know the details how you can sponsor, but I think some people in the room can tell you how you can do that. Because <laughs> I think for me, it's always bad to wait for the AR64 build as it's always the latest that comes in. Right. Yeah, just to make sure that I understood the question correctly is, is like right now when you do the, uh, the AR64 build, it's, it's the second build, right? It's, it's the one. That I've done in parallel, but it always takes the longest. So if you yeah. can, the, the question at the end is, have, has MPR thought about sponsoring hardware to the CentOS community so that we can build for AR64 faster? Yeah, and um, uh, one of the biggest problems is most people build it on uh, like an emulator that's on it, x86. And so okay. that makes it really so it's really still so okay talk to me afterwards and i that this is what we want we want to work with you guys on how to build it that's why i'm here oh. um how how can we make that process faster easier because i want you to build it and if you get frustrated you're not going to oh oh that's fine okay. and wow i really did not expect this many questions this is awesome no no this is awesome um but i don't know how i am for time i really wish i we are. There's a quick question. There's there's a rumor that ARM nine will have ABI breakage. Is this true? <laughs> I'm sorry. ARM nine I, I will have like ABI I'm, breakage. I feel like a politician up here, you know, going, <laughs> you know, you don't you don't answer the question. I'm sorry. On ARM nine, there's a. Will there be ABI breakage on ARM nine? Is a question from the chat. So, since you said ARM, I, I, I don't... oh sorry. Well, that one I really didn't want to. Yeah, heard. Um, I don't know. Uh, go go to community.ampere.com and in there post that question, and I'll get you a real answer to it. Okay, so sorry about that. Okay. Like I said, this is. I feel like you know you're supposed to. Uh, politicians, you, you don't answer the question that was given you. You answer. We'll take one more and then move They're on. They're not going to ever let me speak again. Yeah, I want to applaud Ampere. Um, I've been using uh, the Oracle thing and hosting my own uh, matrix over there. And it's working really nicely. Thanks. Yeah, one one of the things I did for uh, for my 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 son is is set up an account, and we now have a Minecraft server running on this, um, um, always free. And the Oracle stuff that's what's really nice about it, and how it's growing so much is they really do have that always free tier. Um, I mean, trust me, they, I get so much email from them. They want you to convert that into it, but it's a great thing for projects and whatnot to get started. So, but we love all the cloud providers except for the bookstore. <laughs> no, no, we, re, we, the more stuff, more people who use it, more things are going. Um, it's, if it works on Graviton, it's going to work on our stuff. So we're really, really happy with that. Our first goal is to grow the pie. And then at that point, um, yeah, we'll worry about it. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And thank you for letting me borrow your laptop. <laughs>